Let's make a face. Part one with HTML, CSS, and SVG. We'll start using HTML, Hypertext Markup Language, SVG, Scalable Vector Graphics, CSS, Cascading Style Sheets, to start making this face right here. This is our starting point, a bare minimum HTML page. As you watch this, I'd like you to follow along. Write the code yourself as I write it. Don't copy paste. You can go to this link right now and follow the steps that I'm about to do. What you're looking at here is a program inside of the platform called VizHub, which I created to help teach this course. What I'd like you to do is fork this program by clicking on this button here. And when it comes time to submit your assignment, just submit the link to your forked thing with your modifications. Before we do anything, the first thing we need to do is sign in. And you can sign in via GitHub. So if you click sign in with GitHub, it'll take you through this GitHub authentication flow. Just type your username and password, click sign in, and you should see your own user avatar in the corner. Now you can fork this by clicking on this little button here. So now you've got your own fork of this program that you can modify. To open the editor, you can click Open Editor, and then navigate into Files, and click on Index.html. You can resize the split pane like this. And I'm going to increase the browser zoom to get larger code here. We have here a bare bones HTML page. It starts with this declaration of the doc type that tells the browser that, OK, this is an HTML5 document. And then we've got this open HTML and close HTML set of tags. What goes in here defines the whole HTML document. The head of an HTML document gets loaded first completely before the body does. Things that you can't see directly on the page but have some impact on the page go inside the head. For example, the title tag sets the title of the page. If this were a file on disk and you were to open it up, this title would go in your tab of your browser. But in, in VizHub, the title goes right here. That's where it ends up. In the body tag is where we want to put everything that shows up that you can see. So we can type in here. I'll type hello and see what happens. Boom, there it is. Hello, really small. To make that text a bit larger, we can use the H1 tag. So we need to say open H1 and then close H1, like that. And now it's a little bit bigger. All right, we've got to hello world. But let's not get sidetracked. Our original goal here is to make a face. But what kind of face? I'm thinking like a smiley face, you know, one of those yellow smiley faces that's a circle and then the big black eyes. Something like this. Let's take the first step towards this goal by making the circle that is the outline of this face. I'm going to reclaim some of my screen real estate and enter full screen mode here. To reclaim even more screen real estate, I'm going to close the editor, which is really the sidebar. All right, so what I want to do next is instead of saying hello world, there should be a big yellow circle. So to get started doing that, I'm going to create an SVG element. Begin SVG, end SVG, scalable vector graphics. And inside of there, we can make a new circle element. Begin circle, end circle. Within the SVG element, you can have tags that are specific to SVG. So circle is one of these uh, kinds of elements that only really functions inside of an SVG element. We can make the circle visible by giving it a radius. We can say r equals, and now this tiny little circle showed up. Let's say r equals 100. This means that the radius, the distance between the center and the outside, is 100 pixels. Before we go any further, I want to clarify 
this distinction between tag and element because it may seem like I've been using them interchangeably, but they mean different things. A tag is in the code that you write. This is a tag, like the opening tag, the closing tag. It's the syntax that appears in your source code file. But when this file gets run by the browser, it produces elements. And if you right click on something and you say inspect, you can inspect the element. This element gets produced when the tag in the, in the code gets evaluated in the browser. So see, here's our circle tag. Let me make this a little bit bigger by hitting Control plus. And I like to move these developer tools down to the bottom, which you can do like this, doc to bottom. So this is our document object model. We've got SVG, and inside of that we've got a circle. And notice how you can expand and collapse these. When an HTML file gets run by the browser, it parses all of these tags in the source code, and based on that, it produces this document which is a tree data structure. It's nested. And this data structure itself of nested elements in a tree structure is called the document object model. So when people say DOM manipulation, document object model manipulation, it means they use JavaScript to change this around. What I want to do next is make this circle bigger, big enough to fill the middle of the page and make it yellow as the foundation for our smiley face. I can keep changing the radius to make it bigger, but look what happens at radius 200. It gets cut off at the bottom. This is because the SVG needs a width and height. And if you don't specify width and height, it gets some default width and height. You can set the width and height like this. Width equals let's say 960, and height equals 500. These dimensions of width and height are used on VizHub as the uh, dimensions of the program that runs. These are also the dimensions used on blocks.org, by the way. But now we're getting these pesky scroll bars, which I want to avoid, and we're getting these because the body has a default margin. We can override the default margin by doing some inline CSS. So we can say style equals margin colon zero. I don't know why the scroll bars are still there, but we can get rid of them by saying overflow hidden as well. Okay, now there's no scroll bars. But I don't quite like how this feels. This is called inline CSS, meaning inline with the HTML. This is CSS, but not in the traditional way that you would do it. So let me just refactor this a little bit. The term refactor means to clean up the code. If you never stop and refactor, your code is going to be a mess, and you'll be stuck with technical debt. So pay off your technical debt early, refactor all the time. Instead of doing inline CSS like this, we can introduce a style tag. Begin style, end style. Inside of this style tag is where you can put CSS. So I'm going to get rid of this here and put it in here. But right now this is not valid CSS. To make it valid CSS, we need to start with a selector. So I'm going to start with body as our selector. And then inside of that block, I'm going to set these two properties. And this now is just left over. I'm going to delete that. And now we can spread out a little bit, put the properties on different lines. So now we're using CSS in a style tag to affect the body, namely set zero margins and set no scroll bars. Let's get back to our task at hand, namely making the circle the foundation of a smiley face. So let's work on the position of this. The circle 
element has these attributes CX and CY. We could set CX to be the center X coordinate and since we want it to be in the middle that's going to be 960 divided by 2. But we can't exactly say 960 divided by 2 like that because we're not in JavaScript. But let's use JavaScript to figure out what this is. You can open up the developer tools under more tools, developer tools, also control shift I. That's a shortcut worth remembering. Control shift I, control shift I, control shift I. See, it's, this is where errors pop up too. So if you have some problem with your code, look in the console in the developer tools. It's going to tell you what the errors are. Oh, it's telling us this is not valid. But if we just paste that in here, it will evaluate as JavaScript, and we can say, oh, that's 480. So let me put that as our value for CX. Now our circle is in the middle. And let's do the same for height. I already know 500 divided by 2 is 250, so I'll just change it like that. Whoops, that's the radius. I meant to change uh, CY. Let's set CY to 250. All right, now everything lines up. And our 250 happens to be correct because it's height divided by 2. So that will make the circle exactly filling the height of our display here. All right, the last remaining thing is to change the color. And I'm going to do that by setting the fill attribute. We can say fill equals, uh, what color are the smiley faces? Yellow. So I'm just going to type yellow. All right, now we've got this big yellow circle. But these attributes are beginning to be a bit cumbersome, so I'm going to just reformat these. But I can't quite tell where the circle ends and the background begins. It's a little tricky, so let's make an outline around this. To make an outline, we can set the stroke attribute to be uh, black. Now we've got this black outline around it. And I kind of want to make this a little thicker, so I'm going to set the stroke width attribute to be, let's say, 5 pixels. Yeah, now it's going to be nice and thick. Or heck, let's say 10. But now we've got this problem where the top and the bottom are getting cut off. To solve that, we need to reduce the radius a little bit. See, we really want to be able to describe this with math, as in like height divided by 2 minus uh, stroke width divided by 2. But since we're not in JavaScript, we can't really do that. But I'm just going to stash this thought for later use in an HTML comment, which looks like this. So I'm just going to stash that thought there for later. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to do the math in my head. It should be 250 minus uh, 5. That should get it to line up. So 245. OK, now it's lining up pretty nicely. The next thing I want to do here is add some eyes to this face. And we can do that with circles as well, just two black circles. I'm just going to copy paste this circle into a new circle, and then change these attributes to be eyes. So let's start by making the fill black and no stroke. Uh, that's actually the default. So if I remove the definition of fill, the fill is going to be black. So now we have a big black circle. Let's make it smaller just by changing the radius. Let's say 50. OK, now we've got one. I Cyclops smiley face here. So let's move the eye to where the eye should be, namely a little bit to the left and a little bit up. To move it to the left, I can use CX or change CX. And if I were to express this in math, I would want to say center X minus I offset X. 
but since we're not in code, I can't really do that. So I'm going to say, okay, it's going to be 480 minus something. So let me just say 440, but I'm going to stash this thought in a comment. But see, it did move over a little bit, but not as much as I had hoped. Let's try 400. Uh, it needs to be a little more, maybe 350. Okay, great. Now, if we want to move it up, we need to change CY. You might think that m increasing the Y value would move it up, but if I change this higher to 290, see, it actually goes down because in this coordinate system, Y of zero means it's at the top of the screen. So if we want to move this up, we need to actually decrease the Y value. So let's try a value of 200. Okay, we're getting closer. Maybe, I don't know, 180. All right, that looks pretty good. So now let's make our right eye. I'm going to copy paste that circle and then change CX to move it over. Ideally, if we were in code, I would want to say center x plus i offset x. That way we could define i offset x in one place and then it would move both eyes. But since we're not in code, I'm just going to sort of guess at what this is going to be, like maybe 400 or, I don't know, 600. All right, we're getting somewhere. but. I'm beginning to feel a bit frustrated that we can't write code, JavaScript code, in here because this is just HTML. For example, I don't really know if this I is at the right spot. It looks like it's a little further away from the edge than this one. So I'm going to, at this point, take the plunge into migrating over to use React. Then we can do all those things that we wanted to do uh, using math to position and size these things. This might be an interesting artifact keep, to keep around, so I'm just going to rename this to Smiley Face Part 1. And then I'll just um, update the description in readme.md. MD stands for Markdown, by the way. I'm just going to make this say halfway towards a smiley face. That's all for Let's Make a Face Part 1. But stay tuned for part two, where we will be using React and D3 to finish off this phase.